You have probably heard by now that the universe is expanding. But how did we find that out? And how fast is it really expanding? If it is expanding now, is it going to expand forever? Early in 1916, Albert Einstein just completed his greatest life's work, a decade-long intellectual struggle to derive a new theory of gravity. It was the first theory that explained not only how objects move through the universe, but also how the universe itself might evolve. Shortly after, however, Einstein realized that there is a problem. The theory predicted entirely different universe than the one we thought we live in. But what did we think at the beginning of 20th century? We were convinced that the universe is static and eternal, consisting of a single galaxy, our Milky Way, surrounded by infinite and empty space. At that time it seemed very logical, we could see stars within our galaxy, but telescopes were not good enough to see beyond that. Einstein's general theory of relativity predicted that the universe could not be static, as purely attractive gravitational force would cause all matter to collapse on itself. This bothered Einstein so much that he tried fixing his theory by adding a simple constant, also called the cosmological constant, that would act opposite to gravity and would cause space to expand. If the cosmological constant would exactly counteract gravity, he could explain why the universe is static. Well, now we know that we were wrong about the static universe, however, there was something right about the mysterious cosmological constant that would cause space to expand. In 1927, Belgian priest and cosmologist Georges Lemaitier, Lemaitre? Lemaitre? Well, this guy solved Einstein's equations of general relativity and showed that it predicts that the universe is expanding. Einstein was enraged by the idea of expanding universe and told once George, your math is correct, but your physics is atrocious. George luckily continued in this direction, and in 1930 showed how universe could have evolved from infinitely small point, the theory now known as the Big Bang. But scientists were not yet fully convinced that this is indeed the truth. In 1925, Edwin Hubble published results of his two-year-long study with a new telescope. He could now identify stars in what was before just a fuzzy spot in previous telescopes. To be more specific, he identified a special type of star, which is incredibly useful to astronomers, called Cepheid Variable Star. So what are they, and why do astronomers care? Cepheid Variable Stars are very specific stars whose brightness varies over time. The brightness varies due to regular cycles of expansion and contraction of ionized helium, which influences how much light will escape from the star. This type of star has been known since 18th century. In 1908, Henrietta Leavitt discovered something unusual about them. She was employed at Harvard College Observatory as a computer. Computers at that time were employees that collected information about stars. We knew that the brightness of Cepheid stars oscillates regularly over time. But Leavitt noticed that there was a relation between how bright the star is and how fast does the brightness change. Cepheid stars whose brightness oscillates slowly are more bright than the ones with faster oscillation. This relation allows us to calculate exactly how bright the star is just by measuring how fast does the brightness change over time. Ok, so what is this good for? Well, it's simple. You look at a Cepheid star, measure the brightness oscillation and from that calculate the star's brightness. You compare that with the brightness that you observe on Earth and that gives you exactly how far the star must be. This simple method was a breakthrough in astronomy, as it allowed for the first time to easily measure distances to stars. So let's rewind back to Edwin Hubble and his measurements. He used this exact method to measure distance to one specific star. He revealed that the star is roughly 2.5 million light years far, which meant it had to be outside of our Milky Way galaxy. Now we know what he measured was a star in the Andromeda, galaxy roughly as big as our galaxy with about 100 billion stars. This was a dramatic discovery. Up to this point, we believed there was nothing outside our galaxy. But he didn't stop here. Shortly after, he measured many more distant stars and discovered something entirely unexpected. This time, however, he did not only measure how far the stars are, but also how fast are they moving. So now we already know how we can measure distance to stars, but how can we measure how fast are stars moving? We will look at the light from stars again, but this time we will look at the individual colors. If you look closely on the visible spectrum of light radiated from stars, you will see all colors, but some very specific colors are actually much dimmer. This is due to the quantum nature of atoms, and it is universal for almost all stars. Ok, so let's go back and ask ourselves, what happens to the radiated light when star is moving at some speed? Well, what happens is called the Doppler effect, and I'm pretty sure you have experienced it yourself, but with sound instead of light. 
Sound waves coming to you from an ambulance will appear compressed if it's moving to you, that means higher frequency sound, and will appear stretched if it's moving away from you, that means lower frequency sound. The same thing happens with light. The frequency of light decreases when a star is moving away from you. The faster the star moves, the more the frequency decreases. So let's put the pieces together. We know that light from almost all stars has some regions of colors where the brightness is lower. But if a star is moving away from us, the frequency of light will decrease. And that's why we will see these dim regions actually shifting towards different colors. This in turn means that we can calculate the speed of a star by measuring how much the dim regions have shifted from the original color. With this exact method, Hubble measured distance and speed of distant stars and realized that the further a star is, the faster it's moving away from us. If you look at a galaxy far far away, it will be moving away from us. And if you look at a galaxy that is twice as far, it will be moving away from us twice as fast. So what does it mean? You may think that it means we are in the center of the universe. But if you looked from any point in space, it would look the same, as if you were in the center of the universe. So no, it doesn't mean that we are in the center, but it means that everything is moving apart from each other. In other words, the universe is expanding. But how fast is it really expanding? Your monitor, roughly one meter in front of you, will be expanding only by one thousandth of the size of atomic nucleus per second. So small, why do we even care? But consider this, one end of our galaxy is moving from the other end roughly by kilometer per second. That still may seem small, considering Milky Way spans 10 to the 17 kilometers. But if you look at a galaxy that is very, very far, to be precise around 15 billion light years, it is moving away from us now faster than the speed of light. That means we will never see the light that is radiated just now. These discoveries, spanning over just a few decades, change our view of the static universe containing only Milky Way to much bigger expanding universe. They also meant that the universe may have started in what we now call the Big Bang. Though this isn't the only reason why we think that's the case. But it also meant that we know roughly how old the universe is. Because we know at what speed is the universe expanding now, we can estimate how long it had to take to be as big as it is now. This time is now estimated to be 13.7 billion years. So if the universe is expanding now, does it mean that it will expand forever? Or will it stop expanding and collapse again on itself? We will look at that in upcoming videos, so feel free to subscribe. And if you are curious about how big is the universe, check out this video.